Hi, this is Patrick. In this video, I want to talk about this kind of concept of another way of thinking about annotated bibliographies. So in EdTech 601, you're doing an annotated bibliography as an assignment, and it's really meant as a way to kind of teach you a structured way of kind of note taking, if you will. And so when we think about annotation or annotating, you might annotate an article by like actively, you know, underlining, highlighting, writing in the margins. But an annotated bibliography is more that act of creating annotations um, as part of an assignment. But the idea behind it really is that you could carry on this practice of writing annotated bibliographies as a starting place for any kind of project you're going to do where you need to do a lit review. So it's one way to kind of start that lit review process. But doing a lit review, there's lots of different ways, lots of different um, types of lit literature reviews but even when you think of annotated bibs if you start googling like what's parts of an annotated bibliography you know you'll find all kinds of things like there's this one that talks about kind of step by step it's really not a great example and i think it's partly because it's trying to talk through an undergrad this one here is a little better where it talks about what what are parts of an annotated bib so an annotation would have things where it's you know it talks about qualifications of the author i don't think that's needed um, but you know methods used summary of findings evaluation i think those are all really good parts and so for me a good annotation is something that later whether you're using something like Zotero and Mendeley you could actually go look at and you'd get a gist of the article even maybe it's been two or three years since you read it you then could always follow up and look at the article and you know look at it with new eyes and see if you still agree with your kind of findings and evaluation let's say years later but I think that um, one of the ways that I like to think about an annotated bib is you could f definitely sit there and think about the parts of an art article and so you could start with, you know, adding headings, you know, purpose. It might be method and you might even be more specific with the method. You might actually um, research questions, let's say method. You might even go further um, or even rather than method, you could say um, you could just use method as a big one, but you could say research design. You could say uh, data collection, data analysis. So these are things that you later um, might want to, you could have something on reliability and other things that might go too much. Then you can just go to findings um, and it could be limitations and it could be key quotation. can't spell right now um, so then if you sit there and think about this um, it's you could use this kind of format every time you read something is say all right I want to make sure that I have each one of these things um, addressed so I can later go back to it um, but another way is that you could use a Google form for something like this. So this is an example of a project and I've done this in many ways. This is one where I did it with a class where we did a lit review on revised work. And so for each year title, um, link to the article journal. So some of this you would just as easy get, but then people have to write and what's the purpose? What's the research questions? Context sample, maybe that's needed, maybe it's not. Maybe you just wanna really go into data collection, data analysis, findings, key quotes, right? And so you could use a spreadsheet this way, but you could also create a Google form to kind of help you when you read. So in Google Drive, if you've never done one before, I can go to Google Forms. And this is where I could sit here, and this could be something I could do throughout my entire doctoral program if I wanted to. Right, and so it could be that I might start with, um, and it really kind of depends on how you want to think about this. Um, let's change this to probably, we'll start with short answer. And it might be author last name. And then it might be year. Let's duplicate that, sorry. I can duplicate a couple of these, All right? Then it might be that I want um, title of article. 
whatever I did up here did not do what I wanted. Um, and it could be that title and some of these I start wanting to do longer answer. So I have last name of author, year, title. Maybe I want journal, maybe that's not needed if I have um, abstract. And then this is where, let me adjust my screen. I might do purpose study. I might do research questions. And this is also a great way if you have something like this to guide you when you're note taking or preparing annotations is it also helps you find out, well, gosh, is this really a uh, empirical study? Are there research questions? Is there a research method? That type of thing. So it could be data collection. So what type of instrument or I think we said research design first. So is it qual, quant, mix, you know, might be pre post, you could find other things and then it might be um, data collection, you know, so how are they getting their data? How are they analyzing their data? Um, might be findings. And you might find that some studies you don't have this or it's not important. Um, limitations. And then I always think it's helpful, key quotes with page numbers. So that's if I later want to quote it without having to come back. And then sometimes people might even have notes. So for other ideas that come up. And so I could create a form like this and you could even copy this form if you want. And so just like this, I could use this as a form when I'm doing it. And so I can start filling this information. And when I do, we'll say sample, sample, sample. Let's just say I'm done. I do that and then I'm going to go back to here, I'm going to hit refresh, and I, I can see responses, but it's more when I come here and I create this new spreadsheet, that then I, ha I start having this thing that would have all my information for my annotation. So this is just a quick idea, something that I was thinking about the other day that perhaps um, people don't think about is that this could be another way to kind of structure your reading. And so this doesn't mean that you can't use Mendeley or something like this. You could still read your articles, let's say on an iPad and annotate with say an Apple Pencil or whatever you do that kind of thing. Then you could use something like this to get your notes right into a structured format that then maybe you copy and paste these results, you know, so I could sit there and highlight them, copy, transpose, and copy them into say Mendeley or Zotero if I wanted to. So um, hopefully this is helpful. It's just another way to think about organizing your research. Thanks.